Hello there. In last week's video, I designed this using Figma. In this week's video, we're going to start coding up the design with HTML and CSS. Hi there, my name is Kevin and welcome to my channel where we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing if that sounds like something that would be interesting to you. Now, last week, as I said, we coded up that design using Figma and a lot of people asked me to go ahead and actually code it up. And I was sort of thinking about whether I should do it or not, but there was enough people asking me to do it that I thought it would be a lot of fun especially because one of the things that came up was the responsiveness of it. How would you make that responsive? So that is going to be part of this project. The very first thing I'm going to do is show you how you can take the Figma link that is down below. So you can actually extract the assets yourself. You can code along, see if you can do it better than me. I'm going into this one a little bit blind. Usually I like preparing things a bit, but in this one, I'm just going in. This is the raw version of me coding up something when I have the design. So you get to see a few mistakes that I make, but I also think it's important to see how I fix my mistakes and get around it. Part one, you won't see too much of that though. We're just going to be doing the HTML. So it's a little bit more straightforward. So here we go. Now I've put a link down in the description below that has a link to this design file. It's open to anybody. So if you click on that, it should bring you here. But if you do not have a Figma account, you're going to get something like this, where it's going to tell you to sign up with either email or Google. And when you're here, this is a view only. Uh, so I can't see like, actually, let's just move this out of the way for a second. Like this is the one where I'm logged in and I can see a whole bunch of information. And actually you can see my mouse moving live in the other view. So that's one of the cool things with Figma. It is very good for collaboration. Um, but in the one where I'm logged, let's make this bigger so you can actually, so it's not confusing. There we go and block everything else out. Um, so we can see that here I can view everything, but I can't get any information from it. This is the little anonymous guy right here. I have my actual account, which is the one where I'm logged in, Kevin, and I have a Kevin number two that I created, which is right here. So this one is what you can get if you're logged in. You can't edit anything. If I try and drag something, nothing happens, but I can get the text. I can get different, um, the font size and get line heights. I can get colors, all of that information. And I can also export things. So if I click on this background and I click plus, you can see that it's going to export that background image. In this case, I can get it as a JPEG. Uh, I can preview what it's going to look like if I want. I could come up here and grab the SVG, which is a little tricky. So just click on anything and then you can click on that. And I can choose that as my SVG right there get a little preview of what my SVG might look like. And then I can export that. Uh, once you, you know, I want just that as an SVG, I can click on export 15 weather and it's going to ask me in this case, I want to save my file. Uh, I'll do this all really fast in a second. So you can save everything up and then in two seconds, we're going to get going and actually start coding this. All right. So all I've done is I've downloaded them uh, already now and I've dropped them into here, which is my uh, you can see I have my images. This is my amazing mountain folder that I'm going to be working out of right here uh, to code it all up. And I've already uh, got that going. So let's jump over to VS Code now and start coding it up. All right. So here we are in VS Code. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just come up to here and create a new file called index.html because we need to have one of those. I'm also going to make a new folder called CSS. And I'm going to be working right from there. So let's make a new file in there called main.scss or just CSS. Sorry, I'm used to writing uh, SCSS. And right away, uh, I'm, in, I'm in VS Code. So this does have Emmet. So you could do like an HTML5 like that and push tab. And it's going to give you a starter for HTML. You could even just do the exclamation mark and tab. And as long as you have Emmet going, that should give you the nice little starter template for an HTML5 document there. And we're good to go. Um, if you're not using VS Code, you can get an extension for Emmet if you don't already have it. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is just link, and this is more Emmet. I'm going to push right link and push tab and CSS slash main dot SCSS. And what I'm going to do is I have the live uh, server installed. So I'm going to click and just to test if it's working, we'll do an H1 here. Hello. And there we go. We can see that it's working. So really, really cool. We're off and running. Uh, so whenever I'm doing my coding up, I like looking at the design first. Now, one thing that drives me a little bit crazy with Figma is you can't see much because you have the two things here and here blocking. So I'm just going to push play and it opens a new tab, but it's going to get rid of all that extra stuff. And I just have the design. Uh, so from here, you can see I only have the design. I should be able to zoom out on that. Uh, scale down to fit. There we go. So I can just see everything that I'm working on. So the very first thing we have is our, this chunk at the top that has our navigation in it and also has a little bit of weather information uh, over there. So I'm going to call that my header. Uh, so in the header here, we're going to have a couple of different things. Um, 
you can see that I sort of have this container thing. Actually, when I did this, I didn't think about how I was gonna set all this up to be in line with everything. So that could be a little bit interesting. Uh, we'll figure it out though as we go through this. So let's first have our, I'm just gonna do this as an image uh, dot logo. And I didn't export that, so we're gonna have to come through here after, but it'll be in my images once I'm done. Uh, forward slash logo dot SVG, because I'll export it as an SVG in a second. Um, in this case, I'm not gonna put any alt text. Now for alt text, you can put some, but the alt is generally to describe if you have an image and you wanna see what's happening in the image. In this case, this is more of a decorative element. Obviously it is the logo. People don't really need to know that. I'm gonna turn word wrap on here. If you're wondering about any shortcuts that I'm using along the way, I do have a video uh, where I look at a whole bunch of shortcuts in VS Code that I find really, really useful. So you can go and check that out. Uh, now the next thing I have is my nav. So I'm gonna do nav.nav. .nav. Seems a little bit redundant, but I like selecting as much as possible with classes rather than elements. Uh, if you disagree with me, that's fine. Everybody has their own approach. I'm gonna have a UL. I'm gonna give this a class of nav list. I'm gonna have my inside of that. We're gonna have li with a class of nav list item. And for that, we're gonna need four of them. And this is all Emmet. And inside each one of those, we will have a link with each link will have a class of nav link. And if I push tab now, that will spit out a whole bunch of stuff here. <laughs> Let's just turn word wrap off for a second so we can see it a little better. So there we go. I have uh, my, I have my, a list item, nav list item. Inside each one of those, my link with the class of nav link. Um, so that's my nav with my nav list. And then the last thing we have that's still inside my header is the weather. So I'm gonna do a div, just a regular div with a class of uh, weather. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Then inside there, we're gonna have a, do, 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 we're gonna have, we're gonna have, how, we, how should we set this up? I'm trying to think this, I think, uh, this could definitely be done with Flexbox if I were to put this in its own, that's one div with a background color on it. And then here I'm gonna have one div that ends up getting split into two. But could that be one big div? I think just for fun, um, I'm gonna actually do this with uh, grid instead of flexbox. Um, so we're gonna have a div of weather icon. And inside that div, we can have the actual image, uh, which is going to be my, uh, it's in my images, images slash weathericon.svg. Uh, I do think, sorry, I just turned word wrap back on there. Um, I could give this some alt text, but this would be something where the ideally the alt would actually be um, updated. You know, this would preferably be dynamic. This icon could change depending on what the actual weather is. Um, and then the alt text could be updated with that. So here it could be like um, partially, partially cloudy, even maybe current, current weather is partially cloudy or something like that. So you're describing what the little icon is. But again, this ideally, you know, if you turn this into a React app or a Vue app or Svelte or whatever you're using um, and it updates with the current weather, uh, that could be kind of cool. Um, so that's this div here. Uh, let's turn word wrap off again. Um, so this div right here is my big block. And then I'm gonna have this here, which is gonna have my two paragraphs in it. So I think this is gonna work. Uh, so paragraph with a class of uh, weather info times two. Inside each one of those paragraphs, uh, we can actually just write the text. So the first one is current weather, and then we'd have a span. And in the span, in this case, minus six Celsius. And I just copied this from off screen, but so <laughs> they get the little degree symbol there. Um, and then the second one will be the recent snowfall span uh, 35 centimeters. There we go. And I think this is going to work out perfectly. Uh, this could all be on one line. I'm just trying to make it so we can see it. You know, I'm, I'm working in a small space with a big font size right now. So it's easy for things to sort of fall off the side. But so you know, if we need to move over, we could a little bit, but I think that's going to work perfectly there if we're using grid. If you wanted to be a little bit more compliant or a little bit more browser support friendly in grid, you can be pretty browser support friendly. I'm going to do a video on that one of these days. Um, but for now, if you do want to um, just do this with Flexbox, you definitely could, but you'd probably have to wrap this in a separate div around that. Uh, so close header. 
And then we're gonna have our main content area. So we can just do main, and you could give this a class of like main content or main or whatever you want, it's up to you. Or even, you know, what might make more sense here is the background image might change to, you know, everything layout wise might change to stay the same, but the background image would change uh, depending if you're in ski, golf, hiking, contact or something like that. So this could be like main and then main ski or something where you have the basic like layout stuff is being handled by this, uh, with the padding, all of that stuff. But then the main ski is what's actually applying the background image. So I think I'll do it like that. Uh, if you're curious about that, the double underscore and the double hyphen I'm doing here, uh, this is part of BEM. It's a, just a CSS naming convention. If you don't like it, some people love it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. If you do not like it, I get it. It's not for everybody. You can name things however you want. Uh, so down into this section, it's pretty easy. We'll do an H1. Uh, we'll do an H1 with a class of what should we call it? Uh, let's just call it main title because that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll bring the text in in a second. Then we're going to have our paragraph and our paragraph. I'm going to give this a class too, even though, you know, idea for this design, we don't really need one, but we can just call it uh, main intro or a main body or something. I don't know. We don't have the rest of the design to go because this is all I created. Uh, so depending on what we had through the rest of it, this this class here might change. Even this could just maybe be title. Um, you know, typography doesn't have to necessarily be something uh, that lives because, I mean, if I'm doing BEM, actually, I would have it more like that. We'll stick with the BEM. Uh, main title, main intro, but I don't always adhere to this. I might have like a title and then if something has to change, it could always be like main uh, title, main as well. There's, anyway, I don't want to confuse, but there's lots of different naming convention and different approaches we could do to that. Uh, such as my buttons. My buttons, I'm not going to adhere to the, putting them in the main. These would ideally be things that could be reused throughout the rest of the site. So to do that, I think what we're going to do is come in here and say, uh, we're just going to have their links, right? So it's just links that look like buttons. So A with a class of BTN, and I'm going to do a second class of BTN primary. And then my next one here, let's come down and we can have our a.btn.btn ghost and, a, you know, btn outline. Uh, I'll do it with outline. Outline's a little bit more straightforward. Ghost is, um, you know, we, you'll often hear things like this called um, ghost buttons, uh, but, you know, we'll stick with that. I think it's a little bit easier uh, to see what's actually going on or to understand what's going on. And then I'm going to come back to here because I did forget to get that. So we'll save. Can I export that? We sure can as an SVG. Let's just preview it and make sure it looks good and we can export that. I'll move it over in a second off screen. But the main reason I'm here is because this is fantastic. When you need to get text out of something, you don't want to retype anything. So we can just come in and copy and paste this directly from that design. So if you do want to work from this, I'd strongly encourage you to uh, go ahead and uh, sign up for a free Figma account. You can work up to three projects, as many drafts as you want. It is pretty cool. And you, is it, this is all in the browser. You can completely design, do everything in the browser. <laughs> um, a few people have asked me if I switched from XD to Figma. No, I have not. I'm still a big fan of XD. I think XD does some things really well. I think Figma does other things really well. And both of them seem to be really, really solid. I wanted to challenge myself to start learning Figma. So, uh, and so that's the main reason I started learning it. Uh, one of the best ways is now that I've learned it, I want to start teaching it too really encourage you to do the same thing. If you start learning stuff, start teaching it. It's really a good way to reinforce uh, what you're learning along the way. When you have to start describing how to do the things that you're learning how to do, it just makes things sink in so well. All right, so that is done. And uh, I think the last, we're gonna have a few finishing touches here. I do need to get my Google fonts. So I don't need that. I need this one, which is, they're all work size. Um, in this case, the font weight is 900. This one, I think I just went with the normal. So normal would be 400 down here. I'm just double checking. Uh, this one's bold, so that would be 700. I just wanna see what font weights I actually used. I think there's nine and seven. So I'm gonna come over to Google Fonts. Oh, there's a new Google Fonts. I didn't even know. This must be part of their 10th year anniversary with the variable fonts. I haven't even really gone over. Yes, I'm so excited about this. There will be a video coming up on variable fonts. I have to change my schedule to get one of these in there. I'm so excited about that, but we're not doing that now. <laughs> uh, so I want work songs. Let's jump into work songs. Uh, oh, they've really changed this. Okay. I want to get this one, the regular. I want to get my 700 and I want to get my 900. Um, realistically, oh, there is no italics anyway. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so I don't want to download. I want to embed and we can just grab this right here. 
copy that. And I'm just gonna put this before my own CSS file. So we'll put this here, we'll put a comment, Google fonts, paste that right in there, turn word wrap on so we can see it all. Um, and then I'm gonna come down a little bit, put another one and my CSS. Awesome. Uh, so we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm gonna hit save and we're gonna come over to my CSS file and I'm just gonna put a little comment here at the top to put this in here uh, so we don't forget. Before we go though, let's go and actually see what we've got. Oh no, I think I closed my port or was it on this one? Uh, there we go, we're back in the incognito. So we can see there's not too much coming in here. Uh, logo SVG, I'm gonna bring that in before we get to the next part. And uh, the other icon we can't see because it's white on white. <laughs> Let's just make sure that the other icon actually came in. We can give a body background of gray. And there we go. We can see that that icon has come in. So I'll fix that other one. We'll fix that link. All right, we've set the stage. We're ready to go. We're ready to start coding everything up. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video, which will be out tomorrow. Uh, or if you're watching this in the future, it is ready for you to watch right now. So you can go ahead and do just that. If you like this so far and you don't want to miss the next two parts and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the fun here. A big thank you for watching this. A huge thank you to my patrons for helping support everything I do here at my channel. It really does make a difference. Thank you a second time for watching. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.